Welcome to Crafty Hints. If we haven't met, I'm Chantel, and I'm so happy to have you here today. We're going to do some quick farmhouse DIYs. They're budget friendly. Here you can follow me on my social media. Let's get crafty. I started with my Cricut Joy, and I'm just showing you that you can do it on your phone as well. And I normally do it on my laptop and my Cricut Explorer, but I have those at work um, working on a project for work. So we use what we've got here. So I'm showing you here, you just want to be careful. I was doing these leaves and if you pull too quickly, that little piece in between can be missed. I picked up this fabric paint at Walmart. It's a pack of 12, I believe it was. And I'm going to do this napkin. I picked up these napkins off Amazon. They're just, they're 100% cotton napkins. I'm not sure I'd go 100% cotton again, as that was a little rough to, to iron. So it is not perfect, but I got where I need to place this. Now, I put a four inch square around my design. Actually, this was one of the designs in Cricut Design. Um, it had a little flower on there, but I took the flower out. So I'm lining up the bottom part and lining this up with the center of the napkin. And just going to make sure this adheres well to the napkin. Just think of all of the possibilities that you could do with this, with fabric paints. You could also use other stencils and tape those down nicely and tape off parts maybe that you don't want, but it just opens things up to other possibilities. Okay, so I took the green, but it was kind of a brighter green. It doesn't look like it here, but it really was. So then I thought, gosh, I want the tiniest bit of black. And whoa, that black was pigmented. It just wiped out the green. So I played with the colors a little bit until I was happy. And then I'm going to use this little dauber, little sponge dauber, and you want less is more. We're going to start out with just a little bit and we can continue to add more. You just don't want to go in because then it can bleed out through the fabric. So just a little bit and then we just keep moving across the design. We can definitely come back and do another coat. So we're just getting that all over and making sure you could do it, you know, very faint on there. If you wanted a more faint design, I was looking for a little more vivid. You could also come in with a few highlights after it dried. You know, again, your imagination's the only limitation, right? So we're just going to continue across this napkin until it's done. And then once it dries, you know, again, we'll, we'll take a peek at it. Now, the directions said to make sure that you've washed your napkin or washed your fabric. Um, and then, you know, that it's iron flat. And then you want to uh, the, let this lay flat for four hours until it's completely dry. And you don't want to wash it if you're going to wash it again um, for 72 hours. So there we are. It had started to dry a little bit. I came back in, added just a little bit in the areas that I thought it needed it. Then I had done, the, as you can see, it didn't bleed anywhere. Very happy with that. Um, I also did the design and kind of flipped it to the other way for the other napkin. So I did four. I did two and two. Two, you know, going each way. So let me know down below, do you use cloth napkins in your home? 
my sister and her family use them all the time. And so I thought this might be a neat little summer gift. Um, you know, if I come over for dinner or something like that, uh, it might be a cute little gift. Oh boy, she might watch this video. Didn't that turn out pretty? It's the first of the month, so I've joined these lovely ladies for another collab. And there's a playlist below. This month, Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun is our host. And Brenda from Rustic and Lace is a co-host with me as well. All of the DIYs below will be farmhouse inspired. So click on the playlist. It'll take you from one video to the next. Enjoy! Okay, I got this carafe and two wine glasses and I thought it would make a wonderful wedding gift. So I'm just finding that center where I want to mark this. And as you may have seen before, I'm going to etch the glass. So I'm just going to cut this masking tape off, but making sure that I have the marking down at the bottom and some at the top so that I can find my center easily. I used my Cricut Joy again, and I'm just doing the initial of their last name. And so that's a nice R. And I used Raustula again with my font. You can find that free at dafont.com. So just putting that in the Cricut Joy, super easy. And just press that on your phone. Okay, then all I need to do is click unload. And you might watch this summer. I got mine last summer for $99 at Joanne. They were having a sale um, and several other places did as well. So keep an eye out. Okay, you want to make sure and keep that center in there because wherever the space is, that's where it's going to etch the glass. So I'll put some transfer tape on here and then we'll just put this right on the glass. My best friend and her husband made me this tumbler. Well, I guess it's also a craft holder. Um, so sweet. I appreciate it so very much. Look how it holds it right in place for me. Okay, as you've got this on there, you just want to snip as it's going around the round bottom edge and just make sure that nothing's bubbling so you can continue to snip around wherever you need to to give it a little bit of give, but make sure it's not going to be in a spot where you might slip with the armor edge. And then you're going to want to rub those edges so smoothly. And up at the top, I'm really not going to get it up there, but I want to make sure and protect the glass just to be safe. And then I'll just take my finger and kind of rub those out and above this so that it doesn't bother where the stencil is. Now, you could take contact paper and use an X-Acto knife and cut out that letter and then use the contact paper on there as your stencil and do the same thing. There's, there's so many ways that you can do this without a Cricut. All right, I'm gonna use my heat gun just to make sure that it shrinks this just a littlest bit against the glass. And here's my armor edge. I'm just gonna use a paintbrush. You could also use a dauber that would work well. You just want to make sure that you're daubing it on because if you do do this with the paintbrush, you could have brush strokes. So make sure you're just tapping it on there. And I should not have done that with my fingernail. And I normally wear gloves. So if you're using this, you want to be mindful that it is a chemical that, you know, does eat the finish off of the glass. So be very careful.
just make sure you get nice solid coverage. Now at the end, if you wanted to, you could come back with your paintbrush and take off that excess and put it back in your jar. It's such a little bit, and I'm just rubbing this down. I was not wiping any off. So just make sure you get some good full coverage. Now we're going to take this and wipe it off and see if it's done. Honestly, I wish I would have given this just a few more minutes. It turns out nicely, but I think five more minutes would have done it. I believe I waited about 15 minutes. Often I'll leave it on there a half hour and I haven't had any issues. But this was a wedding gift and I didn't have another one. So you worry, you know, but it did, you know, it wouldn't have hurt it. I'm just making sure, and I'm like, yeah. So now I just rubbed it all off, and now I'm taking this off, and I just want to hurry and make sure that, you know, none of that chemical is on the other glass. And there it is. Isn't that pretty? That'll be so pretty with, you know, some wine in there, maybe some lemons and water. All right, this is a thrift find. I picked this up at a yard sale and thought it looked a little bit odd with just the two flowers there. So they've got a big blob of hot glue here and I'm just gonna take my heat gun. You could also try a blow dryer, but I love this cheap little heat gun. It just, I, it was like $11 on Amazon. And it's in my Amazon list usually. I can include that down below. So I'll just take these off and see if I can't find another project for them in the future. Waste not, want not. But I think that this is one that I could use either in the summer, spring, or fall. I'm not going to glue my flowers on. I'm going to use some wire. So break out your floral wire and your favorite flowers. And these were ones I got in one of those clearance boxes at Michael's. They were in a little pot. So of course those little pots go in my stash too. Okay, I got that rosemary at Walmart and I'm just gonna snip it all off of the stock. I thought if I added, you know, some brighter greenery, it would give it that spring summer feel. So I'm going to take the ends of that do have wire. So I'm going to, after I place it here, I'm going to twist it in with the other wire flowers they have there just to make sure that it stays in place. And then after I get all of my flowers in, in place, I'll just go back with the wire and there's just a, that little wreath underneath that you can just wrap it all around and make sure everything's secure so that it doesn't end up slipping off there. But then if I wanna change it in the fall, I can come back, just snip that wire and turn this into a little fall wreath. Those yellows, I think just work either way. So now I'm just taking a little bit of that, the rosemary and tucking it underneath the twigs as well. This will just make it just a bit more sturdy. It also just integrates it into that wreath just a little bit better. Okay, so find where you got, want to place your flowers. I want them to go along the side. So I found the side that, you know, didn't have as many of the other flowers and where I wanted to place these and where the other flowers were. So right now I just took that wire, I tucked it around, looped it around, and then when I come back with the other wire later, that'll make sure it's secure. The other thing you wanna do is go back in and fluff your artificial flowers. A lot of those petals were still stuck to each other and you wanna just you know breathe a little bit of life into those. Just take these, this daisy. I thought it would go well. It's not a bright white. It's a little bit of a cream. 
And look at just this little bit, what it, it just brought, gave it whole new life. I think this is adorable. Just thinking I need just a little bit more greenery right here. All right, so don't forget to give me a like, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. You'll want to hit that, go to that playlist as well. But did any of these DIYs just make you go, oh, I want to try that one. Let me know down below which one you're thinking, you know what, I might want to tackle that. I'd love to hear that from you. If you even want to just say one, two, or three, that would work too. So fun. Okay, I wanted to tuck in just a few leaves. And I'm using a bit of hot glue, but I'm going to glue it to the back of the flowers. And if you did have little spots around the wreath where you might want to cover something, that dab of glue won't hurt too much because you can pull that off as you saw I did earlier or heat it back up. All right, just getting this all tucked in there, the final little touches. And here it is. Let me know what you think. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to go to the playlist below. Here's a couple other videos you might enjoy, but I wanna remind you to take a little bit of time for you and take some time to craft. Have a blessed day.